Joining me now is the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton. Tom, thanks for joining us. Tom, hey, I wanted to get your reaction to the latest news that Russia is allegedly trying to influence the 2020 election. Well, you know, I would kind of characterize the headlines differently. Uh, someone leaked classified information, uh, impossible violation of criminal law to try to change the outcome of the 2000, 2020 elections. Uh, they targeting Trump. First, it was to help, the, the supposedly the Russians wanted to help Trump, and then I guess that didn't work, and then the leak was they're trying to help Bernie Sanders too. So, you know, this is, um, this is another deep state special. They haven't learned their lessons. Uh, the intelligence community operatives who think they know better than the American people and are trying to put their thumbs on the scale for the elections. And that was the real election interference that took place last week. It was intelligence operatives and the people they're briefing illegally leaking information. Yeah, this is the Russia collusion hoax, the sequel. And now they're dragging Senator Bernie Sanders into the mix because it's pretty obvious he's not the establishment uh, preferred choice, if you will, on the Democratic side. You can see that most in the mainstream media despise him the way they speak of him. So um, the timing of this to come out right before the Nevada caucuses is uh, it's pretty chilling, don't you think? That not only are they you know, trying to drag Trump under the bus one more time after we already know that he's not an asset of Russia, he's not Putin's puppet. The Mueller report laid that out perfectly clear for everyone to understand and to read. But now, you know, the Sanders isn't their favorite candidate. So the, maybe this was a, trying to influence what was going to happen in Nevada. And clearly he came out the winner despite the attempt. Yeah. And, you know, everyone thinks that the deep state only goes after uh, Donald Trump, but it doesn't. It goes after anyone who uh, dare raises questions or, in the case of Bernie Sanders, would be seen as a threat to some fundamental activities uh, by the intelligence community. And, you know, if, if there are issues with Bernie Sanders, we've got a public policy process and an election process uh, to kind of talk about those issues. And the idea that we've got unelected bureaucrats or in the case of uh, Congress, if it came out of Congress, uh, congressmen abusing their position uh, as a uh, in terms of their access to classified information to leak that, and I'm and I'm thinking of Adam Schiff uh, to try to change the outcome of an election. It's just beneath contempt and needs to be investigated. I mean, these were crimes that took place last week, and the DOJ needs to start investigating it. As far as I'm concerned. President Trump was somewhat in the dark about all of this. You would think that if it was so serious that some in the intelligence community would go directly to our commander in chief and say, hey, this is what's going on. Instead, this gets leaked to The New York Times. They write an article about it. And then mainstream media, everyone else follows up, piles on without any evidence. Like we were not given any sort of evidence of what Russia is doing behind the scenes. So it's pretty common for a foreign government to try to influence an election. I think every uh, foreign government has their motives, their agenda, and people that they'd like to see in office. So that's not uncommon or unheard of. But it is, uh, it seems pretty disturbing that this, this trend of leakers not going to the president first on something so important like this. Well, it may not even be true. I mean, yeah. the fact they didn't go to the president suggests it wasn't true and they were just making it up and uh, playing to the crowd in, in Congress uh, during this briefing. I, I don't know exactly what went on. You know, there was a briefing of Bernie Sanders, according uh, to the leaks, which I think is interesting because uh, Trump wasn't similarly warned by the FBI when uh, he was being briefed as a candidate about these issues. In fact, they used one of the meetings infamously to try to spy on him. So you're already seeing that uh, uh, the FBI and even the Justice Department plays favorites when um, uh, and, and the intelligence community generally plays favorites in, in how they handle and disseminate classified information. Uh, this is this is a terrible situation we're in where we've got these agencies so out of control. And so that's why I'm glad that the president has taken these steps to try to reform the system by at least initially appointing Richard Grinnell is an ambassador and his deputy, uh, I guess, uh, Cash Patel, who is uh, uh, a former De New Devin Nunes uh, staffer who helped expose some of this corruption initially. So maybe we'll get some reforms finally. Yeah, and I want to some accountability. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so the article that I was talking about from CNN today that 
probably isn't going to get a lot of attention. Uh, it was titled, U.S. Intelligence Briefer Appears to Have Overstated Assessment of 2020 Russian Interference. But, like, how many people are actually going to read that? And the damage is already done, right? I mean, this is a, a narrative, and people are regurgitating it. We saw uh, Lawrence O'Donnell from MSNBC straight up say that the president was a Russian operative. Is he going to apologize for that? I mean, this is kind of confusing for the American people right before an election. Well, they're not going to apologize. It's going to continue, and we're going to just see it up until November, and probably past November. The coup attack on the president, which involves the Russia smear, is never going to end. It's going to continue. Uh, people like Bernie Sanders will sometimes be the targets, uh, because as uh, we discussed uh, the establishment doesn't like him for a variety of reasons. And so if, if the new rule in Washington, D.C. is if you're a politician and we disagree with you, we can break the law to try to bring you down. Yeah, now, and President Trump and Bernie Sanders are crime victims in the same regard there. And, and just to be clear, the White House National Security Advisor did deny that there was any sort of Russian meddling on Trump's behalf. Um, but I will say it's just incredible that they would try this again. I mean, we already had the Russia collusion hoax. Uh, as I pointed out, Mueller, the, the Mueller report showed that there was no uh, meddling, no working with the Russians on the Trump campaign's behalf. So, like, do they think people are stupid? Like, did they think this is going to stick? Well, they, they think that they are uh, they're immune from criticism. There's been no accountability. Uh, for their prior misbehavior. There's been no indictments of any significant figure involved in the Russiagate spying on President Trump or in the smears, uh, uh, the smear operation against him uh, using media and members of Congress. There's been zero accountability. So why not try again? Why not try again? They just tried to impeach and remove the president, and we're supposed to forget about that abuse. We're just going to move on to whatever comes up next and then just go back to the beginning, which is the Russia fakery. Yeah. And I think this kind of brings me to the importance of having uh, loyal employees around or at least honest employees who are there to do their jobs, not to you know create and set their own agendas. Um, what does this say about people working in the administration or in our intelligence communities? And how do we weed this out? Will any of these people be prosecuted? Well, that's a question for the Attorney General of the United States and uh, U.S. Attorney Durham. I'm not confident. I don't, I'm not seeing much evidence that senior officials will be prosecuted. You know, if anyone is prosecuted, there may be some FBI special agents or uh, lower level supervisors involved in the FISA gate lies that will get prosecuted, but the big guys will get away. When you see McCabe and Comey given a get out of jail free pass, um, I don't understand um, why we should be helpful. Uh, that they'll be prosecuted on much more complex crimes. Uh, so I, I'm not confident much will happen, but who knows? Uh, if I were the president, I'd just go ahead and appoint a special counsel separate uh, from the Justice Department and FBI to look into this, because I really don't think the agencies, however well-intentioned Barr and Durham may be, are capable of investigating themselves or, or taking on their colleagues in the other agencies. You, you kind of need someone who has his own power center uh, in the sense of not being uh, tethered to the institutions as opposed to uh, uh, being a real check on them. Absolutely. And I want to move over to something that you have pinned on Twitter. You said a new Peter Strzok email show that Hillary Clinton apologized to the FBI. So uh, what did she apologize ba about? And if you could kind of bring us up to speed on everything that's going on. Well, we've been getting page struck records given to us uh, almost monthly now. They've been dribbling out slowly from the FBI that's been slow walking the release of these documents. And now we know why, because emails like this show uh, further why the FBI investigation Hillary Clinton was a sham. First of all, there's an FBI report of her interview. And Strzok says in his email, what's not in the report is at the end of the interview, she apologized to the FBI over the time and expense in terms of invest having to investigate her and says so she did it out of convenience and it turned into anything but, which is frankly just the confession that it wasn't for her convenience and she knew it wasn't for her convenience, certainly as she was operating the system. Uh, so I don't understand why it is this Justice Department uh, has continued to protect Hillary Clinton. We've got evidence and, and, you know, this is a Justice Department document, so they know about this. We now know that... Uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt that the investigation into Hillary Clinton can't be trusted. 
why would they defer to Comey and Strzok to investigate Hillary Clinton, given everything we know? And uh, this is just more reason to reinvestigate and reopen the investigation on the Clinton email issue. And Statute of limitations hasn't run, Stephanie. And so you're saying that um, the fact that this apology wasn't included in the FBI 302 report uh, shows that there is some sort of cover up, just to be clear? That's the very definition of a cover up. What else didn't make it into the report? Yeah. And, and, so, and you look through 191 pages, but you're saying that the, this, uh, you have to, what's the process? Because there's still a lot more information that you're seeking and it just is taking forever. They're dragging their heels. Yeah, it, it's coming out in dribs and drabs and, and we're uncovering it and going through it as it comes out. Uh, and uh, there's more coming, you can be sure. Uh, what about our attorney general? Like what role should he play in all this? I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I think the leadership of not, not only the Justice Department, Attorney General Barr, but Director Ray, the head of the State Department, Pompeo, the heads of the agencies really need to take ownership in this transparency issue. Uh, because one of the big reasons the deep state's been able to do what it does is because they've been able to keep their misconduct secret. Uh, and doing so, they're protecting the Obama-Clinton gang that abused the power and uh, got away with crimes. And so I would, if I were them, focus on this transparency. And because I'm convinced they know, or at least a lot of bureaucrats know, if the truth comes out, there'd be this kind of uh, really uh, unrelenting pressure by the public to get accountability. So that's why they don't want the documents to come out. And this is where you need the political leadership to step in and step up and get the documents out rather than making us wait years and years for basic uh, information requests to be filled or forcing us to go to court. You know what's ironic, Stephanie? We probably sued the Trump administration more than anyone else in Washington, D.C. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that to me. That, that's incredible. It, sh it seems like it would be easier to access this information, but uh, I guess not. Well, Tom, we're going to have to leave it here. We appreciate your insight and all the work you do over at Judicial Watch. You're welcome. Thank you.